Welcome to Talk Telly, your source for accurate news. We begin with our Middle East coverage, then invite meaningful comments from our audience. Their views are expressed, following the story. In a gripping news narrative, we delve into the escalating tensions in the Middle East. The Houthis, a powerful faction in Yemen's ongoing civil war, continue their relentless campaign, launching missile and drone attacks on maritime commerce in the region. The Biden administration, faced with the challenge of curbing this threat, orchestrates a sustained military campaign against the Houthis, leaving many officials concerned about the potential consequences. The White House brings together top officials to discuss the evolving response to this Iranian-backed movement. With daily operations failing to deter the Houthis, the situation intensifies. U.S. Central Command announces yet another strike, targeting an anti-ship missile ready for launch. As violence escalates, it threatens President Biden's goal of containing hostilities stemming from Israel's conflict with Hamas. Meanwhile, Iran accuses Israel of a strike in Damascus, further complicating the situation. An attack on the An al-Assad air base in Iraq raises concerns as well. Amidst all this, U.S. naval forces launch multiple strikes against the Houthis in Yemen, aiming to neutralize their threat. In the Gaza Strip, communication is restored after a week-long outage, marking a small respite in the midst of a humanitarian crisis. The Houthis frame their campaign as a means of pressuring Israel and solidifying their regional standing. However, the U.S. response risks entangling the Biden administration in another unpredictable Middle Eastern conflict, potentially hindering efforts to focus on other global challenges like Russia and China. Officials strategize to erode the Houthis' military capabilities and secure vital waterways. President Biden acknowledges the limited success of the strikes, as the Houthis vow to continue their attacks. While officials hope this operation won't drag on for years like past conflicts, they cannot predict when the Houthis' military power will be sufficiently diminished. The focus is on degrading the Houthis' ability to launch such attacks, rather than defeating them outright. The US recognizes the pivotal role Iran plays in providing advanced equipment to the Houthis. Western officials believe that the strikes, combined with efforts to intercept weapon shipments, will weaken the Houthis over time. Amid this conflict, ideology, not just economics, drives the US to confront the Houthis. The impact of their attacks is reshaping global shipping routes, affecting major companies. The Biden administration seeks international support and cooperation to counter the Houthi violence. It aims to send a clear message about defending freedom of navigation and the need to prevent a terrorist organization from controlling key international waterways. Amidst these developments, experts and officials express concerns about the U.S. military intervention, potentially jeopardizing diplomatic efforts to end the war in Yemen and worsening the humanitarian crisis. The situation becomes even more complex as some key allies withhold their support. As lawmakers and experts weigh in, there is a growing need for a clear strategy and endgame in this escalating conflict. The cost and duration of the operation raise questions about its sustainability. In this tumultuous narrative, the U.S. finds itself embroiled in a challenging conflict with an uncertain outcome, as the world watches closely to see how events unfold in the Middle East. Thank you, Israel. What if we ran out of bombs? The Houthis are resisting what's happening in Gaza. Are they wrong? We bombed North Vietnam for years. It didn't weaken them, it strengthened them. New rule, if your cause is just, no navy may interfere with your piracy. We started launching missiles at them without the slightest idea of what we would do if that didn't work. How dumb can we get? Iran and Pakistan are not upset with each other. They are each firing rockets at CIA-supported insurgencies in the other's country. Israel must end its occupation of Palestine. Only a two-state solution can lead to peace. The US must stop supporting genocide, stop supporting apartheid, and sanction Israel until they jail Netanyahu and all architects of this genocide. Netanyahu knew about 10 sevenths. He let it happen for the PR value. We have to stop supporting the lunacy of Netanyahu. I no longer acknowledge or support the perverse and immoral political institutions of this country as being legitimate and I refuse to give either party my vote. I refuse to vote for the lesser evil again. 
The time is long past when the world needs to convene an international, perhaps United Nations sponsored conference, where the topic is the realignment of all national borders within that area currently called the Middle East. It is such a mishmash of ethnic populations scattered across many different countries, causing untold warfare, starvation, and dictatorships. It is time, especially, to find some territory the Palestinians can call their own, but it cannot be the current Israel. All of the nations in that part of the world are part and parcel of the problems, all of them, and should be part and parcel of all the future solutions. The world is chasing its tail by failing to correct injustices created by the unbelievable mistakes made, mostly by the British, after World War I, and, subsequently, after World War II. Yes, it will be exceedingly difficult and full of backstabbing negotiations, but if this world is to ever find peace in the Middle East and stop this incredibly stupid and wasteful effort to achieve hegemony by each of the different factions, it is something we must at least consider on all sides. Each side needs to also consider that it must perhaps surrender some sections of territory and also possibly acquire some sections of territory. But if that helps concentrate the ethnicities and religions into areas that each can call their own, and somehow isolates them a little bit better from those who would see them come down, I think we could save hundreds of thousands of lives and billions, hundreds of billions of dollars of wasted human and financial capital. With the trillions that we've spent on defense over the last few years, it's shameful that we can't stop a supposed third-rate power like the Yemen, Iran combined. Wonder why there's no governmental committee investigating this. And just like Israel, somehow our first world cutting edge bombs don't seem to do much. So what to do? Well, launch more bombs of course. And so, here we go marching into yet another forever war for a cause that is unclear with a goal that is unclear and victory undefined. However, Boeing is popping champagne bottles today looking to further enrich their bottom line. This has been a great season for Boeing with endless bombs for Israel to kill babies in incubators and now this. In a matter of months, we so weakened the Taliban with a bombing campaign that their rivals drove them from power. Paraphrasing Einstein, doing the same thing again and again expecting different outcomes is a sign of insanity. Bombs do not stop the Houthis or Hamas fighters. It's just a recruiting program to them. The ones paying the price are the common people of Yemen and Gaza. The West pays the price in the loss of reputation and moral standing. Not to mention economic losses. The solution is simple and cheap, stop Israeli aggression in Gaza and all will calm down. Houthi have been fighting a civil war in Yemen for over a decade. Iran has backed Hamas and Hezbollah attacks for years. Not saying an over-the-top response by Israel is a good thing, but backing out of Gaza is certainly not going to restore peace in the ME, as recent history has made clear. The time is long past when the world needs to convene an international, perhaps United Nations sponsored conference, where the topic is the realignment of all national borders within that area currently called the Middle East. It is such a mishmash of ethnic populations scattered across many different countries, causing untold warfare, starvation and dictatorships. It is time, especially, to find some territory the Palestinians can call their own, but it cannot be the current Israel. All of the nations in that part of the world are part and parcel of the problems, all of them, and should be part and parcel of all the future solutions.